If anyone remembers the old-fashioned TVs with a, a cathode ray tube, which were under vacuum, they were shining a beam of electrons across the phosphor screen and building up the image. It's exactly the same as a el scanning electron microscope. It has a beam of electrons, and it scans it backwards and forwards across the specimen like that. And electrons literally bounce off the surface. You collect them with a detector and turn them into a current, and that's turned into an image on a video screen. So Chris, this machine, tell us about this, because to, to me that doesn't look terribly exciting, but this can do amazing things. So, so, so what's this? This is our latest scanning electron microscope. It's quite a big beast. It can be used for taking those nice 3D pictures, but that's a bit of a waste of its capabilities. So what we've got inside the chamber here is a cutting machine, a microtome, like a bread slicer. So we can take specimens and cut them and look down into them. Take a lump of tobacco leaf, we fix it with chemicals, dehydrate it, put it in a block of resin like household araldite, and then the beam of the scanning electron microscope scanning across and taking a picture you can see it taking its picture there. And then we cut a section and throw the section away. We're not interested in it. And we just then scan the surface of the resin again. And that way we can work our way through the specimen slowly. At about 50 nanometer thick sections, which is very, very thin. A nanometer is a thousandth of a micron, which is a millionth of a meter. So we're getting thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner. So this and takes so a long time, I'm assuming. Yeah, this can be going for two or three days. It's great now being doing microscopy. You set it up, you can go home and have a beer. The materials guys, not the biologists, can get down to below the diameter of a hydrogen atom, which is unbelievably small. Um, they can get down below what we call an angstrom unit, which is about th the smallest you can think about. Yeah. But th what they're not looking at is they're not looking at the structure, they're looking at the distance between two structures. So you can get much finer resolution that way. But in biology, well, the virologists can get down to proteins on the surface of a virus particle quite easily nowadays. So this is the surface of the resin block showing cells in tobacco, and we're going through the specimen. And now we're reconstructing one of the structures. That's the nucleus in the cell. And now we're reconstructing the powerhouse of the cell around it, which are the mitochondria. And then we're reconstructing the endoplasmic reticulum, which some of you heard about. This makes proteins in the cell, and this is what we're interested in our research. And then these little green blobs that are floating around everywhere, those are called Golgi bodies. They process proteins in your body, but they also make all the carbohydrates that you might secrete. So well, this is actually showing the endoplasmic reticulum where the proteins are made. So we're going through about a whole cell's depth in lots of thin slices. We reconstructed in 3D, there's the two nuclei again, and this red and the yellow as it will come up, I think it's yellow. You'll see here, that's all the endoplasmic reticulum. And you could never see it like that before by electron microscopy. If you're seeing just one thin slice, you don't get an appreciation of what it's about. But now we can see it in 3D, we can actually measure it, we can measure its volume, we can do experiments on it, we can have the plants under different conditions, we can see when it's producing lots of protein, when it isn't. So it's opened up a new era of microscopy, just being able to do all that 3D work. So the Golgi body is a little stacks of membrane, about a micron in diameter. And they're in our lab, they're our favorite structure in the cell. We've spent 15 years working on them now. But this is the first time we've ever been able to reconstruct them in 3D and see their position in the cell and then count them the number in one cell compared to another. And it's just reopening up the world of the cell to us. And these microscopes have been around now for only about four or five years. So it's a very, very new technology. So some of you will probably have heard of 3D printers, and you might have seen some of the models we have on the table here. Can you just talk us through these, Chris, and what we have in front of us? Yeah, so if we look at the next video. Yeah, if we have the 3D printer video, that'd be great. So we've got a project at Brooks going on that we thought there's a lot of partially sighted people out there, or blind people, who've got no idea of microscopy at all. If you can't see well, you can't use a microscope. If we can now print out the structures in a cell, we can just pass these round. This is a trypanosome, African sleeping sickness, that we reconstructed using the same technique. So if I and you can imagine, if you haven't got good eyesight, you can actually feel the structures at the microscopic level. And we've never been able to show people that before. 
So it's opening up microscopy to a whole new range of people.